everyone and welcome back to another new video of Printer Professors. In my last video, I just gave all of you a quick revision on refraction through glass lab and refraction through prism. But then I thought to make another video where we will learn about these refractions through glass lab and prism in details. And obviously, I will give you the tips how to draw those diagrams in exam. So, please watch the film video and before we go into the video, don't forget to subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get the notification whenever I upload a new video. So, now without wasting any more time, let's move into the video. Have you ever tried inverting an arrow without even touching it? As you can see, I did it by using a property of light called refraction. Before we go into the details of refraction, let us first learn about optical mediums. Optical medium is a medium or a substance through which light can travel. As you can see over here, I have used a torch and the light rays reaching an eye but can you tell me through which medium it's traveling correct it's air medium when you are seeing my video the light ray is reaching your eye through air medium we can categorize an optical medium into three types first transparent medium through which light can travel easily example air glass Second, translucent medium, through which light can travel partially. Example, fog, frosted glass. And last, opaque medium, through which light cannot travel at all. And it produces a very dark shadow. Example, wood, chair and mirror. Since refraction occur when light travels from one transparent medium to another, we will focus on transparent medium. Further, we can categorize transparent medium into two types. Optically denser medium and optically rarer medium depending on optical density. What is optical density? Optical density is a measure to find how light changes its speed traveling from one medium to other. That means when light travels from one medium to other, and its speed decreases, then the second medium is optically denser than the first medium. And when light travels from one medium to other and its speed increases, then the second medium is called optically rarer medium than the first medium. So I can say from here, denser medium and rarer medium is a relative concept. Confused? Let me clarify. Let us take three examples. First, light is traveling from air to water and its speed decreases. Second, light is traveling from air to glass and speed decreases. Third, light is traveling from glass to water and speed increases. In first case, we observed that air is a rarer medium and water is denser. In second case, we observed Air is rarer medium and glass is denser. But in third case, water is rarer medium and glass is denser. So can I say water is denser medium in one example and water is rarer medium in other example? Absolutely. That is the reason I said denser medium and rarer medium is a relative concept. None of the mediums are permanently denser or permanently rarer. Till now, we have understood that when light travels from one medium to another of different optical density, then only refraction happens and those medium needs to be transparent medium. Now let us have two optical mediums of different densities and let a light ray is incident on the surface of two mediums. A monochromatic light is now incident 
on the surface separating two medium. If we draw a normal through the point of incidence, we will find the angle between the incident ray and the normal which is known as angle of incidence. But what will happen when light ray enter medium 2? Let us assume that medium 1 is denser than medium 2. That means light is traveling from a denser medium to a rarer medium. As you can see over here the speed of light increases in rarer medium. The light ray bends away from the normal. It's clearly evident that the angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence. And the difference between angle of refraction and angle of incidence gives us the angle of deviation. But what if the medium 2 is denser than medium 1? That means light ray is now traveling from a rarer medium to a denser medium. In this case, the speed of light decreases in medium 2 and the light ray bend towards the normal and it's clearly evident that the angle of incidence is greater than the angle of refraction and the difference between them gives us the angle of deviation. From these two examples, we can say that when a light ray travels from one medium to another of different optical densities, it changes its path. And this phenomenon is called refraction of light. This is also called surface phenomenon. As this change in path of light happens at the surface separate two media. But what could be the probable reason of refraction? The reason behind it is the change in speed of light. When light ray travels from a rarer medium to a denser medium, its speed decreases and it bends towards the normal. But when the light ray goes from a denser medium to rarer medium, it bends away from the normal as there is an increase in its speed. Let us now discuss about some real life examples that we observe due to refraction of light. Whenever you keep a pencil into water, you will see it seems to be bent. To find the reason behind it, let us assume a point on pencil A as shown over here. From point A, the rays will travel through denser medium and it will reach the surface of contact. From the surface of contact, the rays will bend away from the normal as it is traveling to a rarer medium and it will reach our eyes. But our eyes cannot follow a tilted path. So it produces an image above the original position due to which the pencil appears to be bent. Here are also two different examples of same scenario. A coin appears to be raised in water as the rays are traveling from a denser medium to rarer medium which produces an image of coin above its original position. Similarly, when we observe fishes standing outside a pond, the light rays are traveling from denser to rarer medium and our eyes produce an image of those fishes above their original position. So in both of the cases, the object appears to be raised. Let us now understand the refraction through glass lamp. A glass lamp is a transparent medium, cuboidal in shape with six rectangular faces and all the faces are parallel to each other. When light ray is incident on any one of the surface of glass slab, it suffers a refraction as light is traveling from rarer to denser medium. And while traveling through glass slab, it bends towards the normal. When the light ray reaches the opposite face of the glass slab, it again suffers a refraction from a denser medium to rarer. Medium. As a result, the emergent ray bends away from the normal but due to its geometrical shape it becomes parallel to incident ray and the angle of incidence becomes equal to angle of emergence and the emergent ray suffers a lateral displacement as shown over here. But how to draw these diagrams in exam? First draw a rectangle that represents the position of glass slab. Choose the point of incidence and draw the incident ray and the normal through the 
point of incidence on surface AB. Extend the incident ray without changing its slope. Now draw the refracted ray bent towards the normal and extend till opposite face. On the opposite face CD mark the point of incidence and draw a normal on CD. Then draw the emergent ray bent away from the normal and parallel to incident. So here is the final diagram. But remember no arrow, no marks and you have to label it properly. Let us now discuss about refraction through prism. A prism specifically a triangular prism has two triangular faces parallel to each other and three rectangular faces inclined at an angle. When a light ray is incident on the first surface of prism, it suffers a refraction. And since the light is traveling from a rarer to a denser medium, it bends towards the normal. After traveling through prism, when the light ray reaches the opposite surface, it again suffers a refraction and since light is now traveling from a denser to rarer medium, it bends away from the normal. Let us now extend the emergent ray backwards and it will intersect the extended incident ray at an angle called angle of deviation. But how to draw these diagrams in exam? First, draw a triangle that represents the position of prism. Choose the point of incidence and draw the incident ray and normal on the first surface as shown over here. Extend the incident ray without changing the slope of line. Then draw the refracted ray by bending it towards the normal. From the opposite surface AC, again draw a normal and draw the emergent ray bending it away from the normal. Extend the emergent ray backward and mark the angle of deviation. So here is the final diagram. But remember no arrow, no marks and you have to label it properly. What you observe over here is the path of light through glass lab and prism that I have performed at home. Oh, back again. So I hope all your doubts are gone and the concept is crystal clear to all of you. And I'm pretty much sure after seeing the full video, you won't face any problem in drawing these diagrams in your exam. So all the very best for your exam and thank you for watching the full video. Thanks to all of you those who have shown so much of love in my last video. But before we go, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe my channel if you haven't yet subscribed. I'll be waiting for all of you in the comment section. Please do share your valuable feedbacks with me. And if you have any doubts, any question regarding this video or any other topic, you can write in the comment section. And if you want to suggest me any topic on which you want me to make a video, please do suggest me that in the comment section or even you can write it in my Instagram account and in my Facebook account. The links are given in the description below. So I'll be waiting for all of your valuable feedbacks. Thank you very much for watching my video and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.